Hello there and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle Ferre and I'm a fourth grade teacher in Maryland. If you have been following me really for any period of time, then you probably know that I love to make technology related videos, a lot of how to's and tutorials and tips and tricks. But for today's video, I wanted to really focus on drag and drop activities in Google Slides. I love drag and drop activities because they can be used for so many different things and in so many different subject areas. So I'm actually going to show you all three different ways that you can use drag and drop activities in Google Slides, so let's jump into it. So the first type of drag and drop activity you can create is a labeling activity. This is where you have some sort of diagram that you want students to label the parts of using little text boxes. So right now I just have a blank Google Slide document open. I'm going to go ahead and X out of the themes because I don't need that. Typically, I resize my slides. You all know I love resizing my slides. I love to make them either portrait size or landscape instead of presentation. However, for drag and drop activities, I actually like to leave it in this presentation format where it's a little bit wider than normal because it just gives me more area to be able to put pieces on there that my students are going to manipulate. I am, however, going to delete the text boxes. I like to just have a clean start when I begin designing any kind of activity for my students. Now, before I begin actually designing this drag and drop assignment, I do need to decide what do I want my students to be able to move and what do I not want them to be able to move. We are actually going to lock down the pieces that I don't want my students to move while leaving the pieces I do want them to move unlocked so they can manipulate them around. For an example, I'm just going to use like a map of the United States and maybe they have to label the states just as an easy example. I do not want them to be able to move the map around, right? Like I want that to be stationary. I also want the directions to be stationary. I don't want them to move those. So I'm actually going to put those onto my slide first. Let's go ahead and find a map of the United States. I'm literally just going to open up Google. <laughs> so I'm going to go to Google and then I'm going to search USA state outline and I'm going to go to images. This first one looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and just right click and copy the image and I'm going to come over to my presentation, right click and paste it in there. Now because I need room for my directions and then ultimately the pieces are going to move around, I can shrink this down. I don't need it quite that big. I also don't need it quite that small. So let's make it a little bit bigger, maybe like that. And I'm going to move it toward the bottom so maybe I can use this top area for directions and then on the side is where I can put all of the states that I want them to move around. So let's go ahead and add in our title. I'm just going to add a basic text box and it's going to say label the states and I can go ahead and change the font. I really like Century Gothic, although if this is my title, I really like Oswald. It's a little bit of a thicker font. I can make this larger. Let's go to like... 36. You can either use the plus and minus or you can just type in the size. I do want to center this. That's looking pretty good. Now I need to add in my direction. So I'm actually going to make this text box a little bit longer. I'm going to go ahead and enter, but I'm going to change my font to Century Gothic and let's go with size like 18. So we're going to tell them to drag, oh, I'm on all caps, drag the state names on the left to the correct state location on the map. Pretty basic. Obviously, I can fancy this up. I can add color. I can add in other images and things, but I just want to show you all the basics of how this works. So I already mentioned that I do not want these pieces to be able to be moved around by my students. So in order to lock them down on my slides, I'm using air quotes because I'm technically not locking them. Like there is not a lock function in Google Slides. I know that exists in like Smart Notebook, but that's not the case in Google Slides, at least right now. So instead, I'm going to actually save this slide as a PNG or a JPEG image, and I'm going to insert it as the background. That will prevent students from being able to manipulate it. So I'm going to come to File, Download, and let's go ahead and do a PNG image. It's going to download it right there. Personally, when I create assignments like this, I like to keep the original slides and then I like to create new ones so that if I have a typo or something, I can go back to the original slides, 
fix it, re-download the JPEG, and then insert that in my new set of slides. But for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete what's on this slide and start over kind of with a blank one. So I'm going to go to background, choose image, and then I'm going to upload it from my downloads. Yes, I have selfies. <laughs> so that is it right there, open. All right, so now it has added it as the background. I oftentimes get questions from people about how do I make it seem not blurry? Because if I go into present, you will notice that it's just a little bit blurry. It's not a huge deal, but you can tell it's not quite as crisp. I will say if you care that much, if you create the backgrounds in PowerPoint and export them, they tend to be clearer than through Google Slides. But personally, I feel like it's just not that important, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Now, I want to add on top the text boxes that my students are going to drag on top of the map. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert a text box. I'm just going to start typing state names. Let's do Texas. <laughs> now, before I copy and paste this to create new ones, I'm gonna go ahead and format this one exactly the way I want it. So we're going to do Century Gothic. We're going to have to keep the font size pretty small with these state names. I am going to center it, but I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to make the fill yellow. That way it really gets my students' attention that, hey, this is the box you're going to move. And then I'm going to add like a black border, maybe make it a little bit thicker. Okay. So now I've got that one. Actually, I need to center it going up and down because I can tell it's not. Okay, now I'm ready to copy and paste that. So I'm just going to copy that text box, paste it, and now I can type another one. So I'll keep it right underneath. So for example, Maryland, I can paste again. Okay, now let's do California. Paste, oh, nope, not inside the text box. Paste again, and let's do, ah, it's not centered, there we go. Alaska, and so on. You get the point. I'm not gonna go through and do all 50 states, probably because I would struggle to remember all of them on the spot. But just to show you how this would work for students, now that this is all set up, you will notice they cannot move any of these background pieces. They are set in stone, but they can take the text box and move it in order to label the states. This is great, like I said, for diagrams or even labeling maps, even labeling like geometry terms in math, like I'm thinking types of triangles, which I'm going to use this in another example, but you can have different triangles and have them label them based on the type of triangle that it is. So labeling is a super easy one because it's based basically just text boxes that they are going to move around. And before we move on to the next one, I just want to make sure you all realize when students do a drag and drop activity, they cannot be in present mode. So present mode is when it brings it into a full screen. You cannot move pieces around on present mode. So they actually want to stay in the normal slides when they're moving those pieces around. Let's move on to the second type of drag and drop activity, which are charts or organizers. I'm gonna go ahead and create a blank slide. Now, organizers and charts are great because they can be used in so many different ways. You can have almost like a Venn diagram or a circle map or just a chart with different sections and they have to organize and categorize things. It's so, so easy in order to do organizers of any kind with drag and drop. So, just like before, I wanna ask myself, what do I want my students to move and what do I not want them to move? For this example, I'm gonna do types of triangles just because that's what we just finished up in math. Maybe I want my students to organize them by acute triangles, obtuse triangles, and right triangles, so based on the angles. I'm gonna go ahead and make that organizer because I don't want them to be able to move that. So I'm going to insert a table and I needed to have three columns. I want one row for the title and then another row for them to actually put the triangles. So I'm going to do a three by two. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space at the top for directions. I can resize this over. Let's go ahead and get the outline. So I want black, maybe four point. And I want this bottom section to be a lot bigger because this is where they're gonna actually move the triangles. So up here, I'm going to give it a heading, so I'm going to maybe make it black, century gothic, let's do size 24, center it, and I want the font to be white. So maybe this is where I put acute triangles, obtuse triangles, right triangles. I'm going to go ahead and bold those, 
and I do want to add in a title just like before so I'm gonna add that up here maybe I don't need a title I'm just gonna put directions I'm going to say categorize the triangles based on their angles drag the triangles at the bottom into the correct column I can go ahead and resize this I'm going to make that bigger center it century gothic okay perfect this is it for what I don't want my students to be able to manipulate so I'm going to again save it as a PNG image and insert it as the background so in order to do that I go to file download and PNG image it's going to save it I can go ahead and delete what I have on here I'm going to go to background choose image browse and then I'm going to select it from my downloads click that and that is now inserting it as my background so again students are not able to move those pieces now I want to start adding my actual triangles those are what my students are going to manipulate in this case or drag into the columns keep in mind for something like this it could be text boxes that they move into the columns or it could be actual images that they are moving into the columns. so you can totally adapt this to fit different subject areas I'm going to go to the shape tool. I'm going to go to some triangles. So I'm gonna just start drawing some. So there'll be a nice acute triangle. Let's do another one like that. But we're gonna spread it out so it becomes an obtuse triangle. Okay, put that down here. Let's go ahead and add a right triangle and do it like that. And if I want, I can swing these around different ways. Like I can make this one go like that. And maybe put that one over here another acute triangle make this one tall and maybe turn it on its side like that and we'll do another obtuse one okay maybe flip this one cool and let's do another right triangle and maybe put this one over here okay you get the point <laughs> so I would just keep adding the triangles and once again students are not able to move the directions or the chart but they can move the triangles into the correct categories something I want to mention on this sometimes you don't have a lot of room to be able to put the pieces that you want them to categorize you can actually put them on the side of the slide so meaning not on the slide but to the side of it so just to show you I can take the triangles and I could actually move them over here on the side however I will say sometimes that can get frustrating for students because when they try to scroll to the side it will move them up a side or down a slide if they scroll too far it can get frustrating so personally when all possible I like to keep the images all on the slide just because it's easier for students to manipulate but if needed you could totally put them onto the side the last type of drag and drop activity I wanted to show you all is with movable pieces and I know what you're thinking you're like Michelle these all had movable pieces but when I say movable pieces I more so mean like manipulatives or numbers that students are doing to either show their work or demonstrate their strategy so I'm gonna go ahead and add another blank slide and once again I want to first add anything I don't want my students to move I'm going to actually show this to you with both ways with moving numbers and with moving manipulatives so I'm gonna go ahead and add my directions up at the top it's going to say move the yellow numbers to make each comparison true then use the base 10 blocks to model your comparison and provide evidence to support your thinking okay I'm gonna go ahead and edit the font like I always do century gothic let's go to size 18 for directions and center it both ways I don't want them to move the directions I'm kind of envisioning over here on the side is where I'm gonna put the numbers and maybe the base 10 blocks but I don't want to put those on there yet because I want them to be able to move those so let's go ahead and put the actual problems I'm just gonna do two for an example so let's say they're comparing decimals 0 0.43 less than blank decimal blank blank also I know you would read that as 4300 so I'm just saying it as I'm typing it so that's where they're gonna actually move the numbers let's make this bigger let's go like 24 I want it to be nice and big okay that works century gothic cool beans I want to leave some space for them to actually show their work so I'm gonna come down let's go to number two I'm gonna actually just copy this part paste it and change 
this. And this time let's do five, six. So I have the pieces that I don't want them to be able to move. Let's go ahead and download this as a PNG. I'm going to delete this and I'm going to insert it as the background. Now I'm ready to add in the movable pieces for my students. I mentioned that I want them to move numbers onto the decimals. So I'm going to create a text box for each number and I'm going to put start with zero. Once again, I'm going to put my font, make it bigger. Let's also go size 24, center it, center it. Let's fill it in yellow and make an outline in black. Now, before I copy this, I do want to check and make sure it's going to fit nicely on that line, which yes, it looks like it will fit perfectly there because there's nothing more frustrating than giving a student a line, but then the piece they're supposed to put there doesn't fit because your students will get frustrated and then you will get frustrated and nobody wants that. So I've got my zero. Let's go ahead and copy this to create the other numbers. And now I can actually copy, I only need four for the next line because I can only go up to nine. So we'll make that, put it there. And we have six, seven, eight, and nine. Oops, I copied too many. Oh, well I did not do that right then. Hold on, I've gotta fix this. This is not acceptable. Okay, that's what I want. Move the five down here. Oh, my brain. So now I have my numbers, but I'm gonna show you all a really neat trick. Obviously, my students might wanna use a number more than once, like they might do for the first decimal 77 hundredths. So in order to create duplicates of these so my students can use them multiple times, I'm going to drag across and select all of the numbers. I'm going to copy them all and paste them all, but I'm going to put them right on top of where they just were. And I'm going to go ahead and do that a couple times. Let's see, there's six lines, so at most they could use a number six times. So now it looks like there's only one of each number there, but I will show you if I move this nine and I put it here, then there is still a nine there. So as they drag them, there will still be more of them underneath, which is really cool. So I have the numbers that they're going to click and drag, but now I need to add in the actual like base 10 blocks because I want them to model their thinking. So I'm gonna go ahead here, I'm going to do a 10 block. Hopefully it knows what I mean by that. Okay, ooh, ooh, I'm gonna use this, and I'm gonna show you. I'm going to actually use just this one. I'm going to crop it. So I'm going to first get the one block. So I'm gonna crop out where it says equals one, crop it that way. All right, so there's my one block. Oh, I did it a little off on the side. Okay, hold on, I can fix this. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. All right, I'm gonna put that over here. And then I'm going to paste that same image, but this time I'm going to crop to the 10. Okay. And in case you're wondering why I'm using base 10 blocks with decimals, because you can use base 10 blocks in order to model decimals. They basically become decimal grids. So I'm gonna go ahead and have the 100 because they might have a hole. And that's good. All right, so I put these over here, and just like before, I want to create multiple of them, so I'm going to click and drag to select all three, copy and paste, and move it right on top of where I had the previous one. So I'm just going to repeat that process multiple times so that they can use the blocks multiple times. And so now my students would easily be able to drag over the base 10 blocks. Obviously I didn't lay this out the best way because they're not gonna be able to fit this underneath, but they could totally resize it and move it where they want to in order to model the decimals. One last thing I wanted to mention to you all, if you are using these types of activities with your students, especially through distance learning, but even in the classroom, make sure you teach them how to use the undo button because it will be their best friend. Even by locking in those background images that you don't want them to manipulate, they will still find ways to mess it up, okay? They will delete slides, they will insert slides, they will delete pieces that they needed to move. So teach them how to use the undo button or how to view the edit history in Google Slides so they can always go back and restore a previous version if they need to. But that is it. I really hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up, 
share it out with your teacher friends, and I would love to know what other technology tips you would like to see from me, so please leave a comment down below to let me know. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos and the notification bell, okay? And as always, thank you for watching. I love you all so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on, and I'll catch you in the next one.